What's going on, everybody? I am back to break down this 11-game MLB DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Excited to get into it. Going to be giving you guys the top plays to get you winning some money. As always, if you enjoyed this content, would be greatly appreciated if you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. And if you are getting very serious about MLB DFS, I would highly recommend it recommend my MLB DFS premium packages. You can get that patreon.com slash kjk underscore DFS link below in the description. I do offer a DraftKings FanDuel MLB package, a prize fix MLB package, and if you want to get access to both, you're going to get it at a discount getting the combo package. So check that out if you're interested. Don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my home run call of the day, fan favorite segment on the channel, the guy that I'm picking to go deep. And without further ado, uh, let's get into it. We're going to go pitching first, as always, and then we'll break down hitting the latter half of the video. And as always, I like to go to sort my sheet by K-Rate. It's Fantasy Sports. We get points for strikeouts. Figure out the top guys on the slate that we want to target for pitching, and then we will break down the bats. And the top guy on the slate is going to be Carlos Rodon, taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Comes in with a 33.3% K rate overall, a 14.3% swinging strike rate, 29.4% hard contact rate, with a 33.7% K rate to righties, a 31.9% K rate to lefties. So very, very good across the board, and he gets a pretty good matchup here. Taking on the Guardians, who do only have a 3.63 implied run total. He is a 153 favorite. Does look like a really solid option. And we're finally starting to see guys uh, cycle through for their second starts. He put up 89 pitches, 12 Ks his first time out against Miami. So he's clearly uh, stretched out pretty good here. Likely going to see him get up into the 90s in pitches in this one, which will never hurt our feelings. He does look like he's going to be the top option uh, on the slate tonight. So Rodon, fantastic option. We have Freddie Peralta taking on the St. Louis Cardinals as well. 32.9% keyword overall with a 14.1 swing strike rate. 33.8 to righties and a 31.9% clip to lefties. So another guy with a 30 plus percent carry to both sides. Another elite strike, a guy, the only problem is he's taking on the St. Louis Cardinals, who uh, when looking at their lineup up and down as far as, you know, how much they strike out uh, on the season. They do, they're pretty neutral. They do have uh, a few guys in there that do have a pretty sh uh, good strikeout rate, but I would say comparing them to the, the Guardians, actually... I think that he kind of they kind of do have the edge compared to the Guardians when you're looking at the overall lineup. So even a better K matchup for uh, Freddie Peralta. He's a 157 favorite compared to Rodon as a 153. So you can make an argument that Freddie Peralta might be the preferred option looking at their price tags on both websites. Uh, Peralta at a slight discount on FanDuel. Peralta at a slight discount on DraftKings. Uh, so if you want to make the argument to go there, I wouldn't hate it. The only other thing to be checking is the pitch count. He put up 88 last time. Uh, so similar pitch counts, similar upside. Both guys are going to be you know, top candidates for you on the slate tonight for sure, uh, depending upon which one, you know, you prefer to go to. We do have Dylan Cease taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. He is a 27.4% K rate overall with a 29.7% K rate to righties, only a 25.3 to lefties. So we do prefer to target him against very right-handed heavy lineups, if at all possible. Looking at what the Tampa Bay Rays are expected to roll out uh, tonight. As far as their lineup is concerned, they do have a pretty... Uh, mixed lineup but actually a lot of lefties in there when you're factoring the switch hitters they do only have a 3.95 implied total they do have a quite a few strikeouts in this lineup up and down i would say this is the uh the best matchup as far as strikeouts that we've reviewed so far especially through the heart of the order there's some decent strikeout rates with a guy like uh low a choy or rosarina uh kevin kiermeyer all those guys do have a decent amount of strikeouts in their bats there are 12 on our ones going out to left field which is a little bit less than ideal but uh, Cease, you do get a little bit more of a discount, 9.7 uh, on FanDuel over here on DraftKings. He's actually priced up at the top, so I'm not sure I would lean going him over Rodon or Peralta at that price tag. Um, definitely limited pitch count compared to those other two guys in his first start. He only went up there and put up 79 pitches, so that's a little bit concerning to me, uh, just for based upon the price tag, but he's certainly going to be a good play. Uh, Tariq Skubal taking on the Kansas City Royals, another high strikeout guy. He does give up a lot of hard contact, though, so uh, just keep that in mind. But when we're looking at the Kansas City Royals uh, up and down their lineup, they are by far the best strikeout uh, matchup that we've talked about so far. They do have a 4.47 implied total, though. But there are 10 mile ones going in from left field, which should help uh, Skubal's case in this pitching environment. So that's obviously not going to hurt our feelings. You get a discount. He's all the way down to 7.9 on FanDuel uh, as far as DraftKings is concerned. They've got a price to 8-2, so the guy that does have a lot of strikeout upside in a nice uh, discounted price tag in a good matchup. So uh, he's a little bit more of a tournament option, I would say. He can be a little bit inconsistent, but another high strikeout guy that you're looking to go to on this slate today. And obviously, I don't want to tell you guys to be playing everyone, uh, but 
those are kind of the, some of the top K guys. And then the next guy I'd be looking to is Jordan Montgomery taking on the Baltimore Orioles strictly from a matchup aspect. He does have a 13.5% swing strike rate, 24.5% K rate overall with a 25.3% K rate to righties and a 22% K rate to lefties. And uh, once again, this is kind of a matchup thing. I mean, the Orioles just have a ton of strikeouts in their bats. They only have a 3.91 implied total. When you're looking at their lineup up and down, uh, just a really, really good lineup to be targeting for strikeouts against left-handed pitching. I mean, pretty much every single guy in this projected lineup has a 20-plus percent K rate outside of uh, Austin Hayes against left-handed pitching. So, I mean, every single other guy has a 20-plus percent K rate. Uh, a lot of guys getting up there in the high 20s and uh, 30s once you get down past Austin Hayes as well, the 5-9 through nine spot here. So, uh, I think that Jordan Montgomery has some massive upside tonight in this matchup. Certainly would not hate you going to him. Um, Jake Odorizzi is the next guy that gets a really good matchup. Take it on Seattle Mariners, similar to the Baltimore Orioles. Lots of strikeouts in their bats. He has a 24% K rate overall with a 23.3% K rate to righties, a 24.9% K rate to lefties. And uh, once again, it, we're looking at the top matchups here. It's such a large slate. We can kind of pick and choose, be picky with our, our pitching. And then Seattle is also a pretty good pitching environment as well. Pulling up the diagram here in Seattle. Uh, you can see a lot of red and yellow going on here as far as uh, T-Mobile Park to hitters. So um, does look like he's a pretty solid option. He is a 125 favorite. As far as his overall uh, pitch count and his price tag, he's only 7-2 over here on DraftKings. 66 pitches last time out, a little less than ideal, obviously. Um, so that's something to just keep in mind. He's probably not as stretched out as some of these other guys we've talked about, but he is a lot cheaper than these other guys we've talked about. So obviously you got to factor that in. Um, does look like he's going to be in a fantastic spot here tonight, taking on the Seattle Mariners squad though. Uh, Herman Marquez and sh in, taking on Chicago and Marcus Stroman taking on Colorado in course field. I mean, obviously the pitching environment isn't good, but I do think that, you know, both these guys grade out pretty good against these offenses. And I think the totals are a little bit misleading. Like, I could, I could see these guys both pitching very good and uh, limiting the runs that they give up to these opposing teams. And there are quite a few strikeouts to be had in these bats on, on both sides. So I think that they could be some low in tournament arms. Obviously, very, very risky. I'm not going to tell you they're my favorite guys on the slate. They're pitching in Coors Field. It's the worst pitching environment in baseball. But I do think there's some validity to maybe targeting them. And then once we get down past them, uh, there's really not much more to be had here. Uh, I mean, no one else really is any sort of talent, to be honest with you. I mean, Ross Stripling would be the last guy that I want to talk about. He's taking on the Oakland Athletics. Uh, another fantastic matchup. The Oakland Athletics are just not a good lineup. He's a massive favorite. Uh, Toronto expected to put up some big runs in this one, so that's not going to hurt our feelings. He's a 210 favorite. Very, very cheap. He's only 6'4 on FanDuel as far as uh, DraftKings is concerned for Stripling. He's 7'7, seven, seven, so they've got him priced a little bit more reasonably. Um, only 24 pitches so far. Um, so I'm not exactly sure his leash is the only problem. Um, it's only going to be a one start spot start and I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's really worth, I mean, on FanDuel he's a lot cheaper. So maybe that's more of a discussion, uh, to be had over here on FanDuel, but obviously I mean, at this stage of the season, I'm just really concerned if guys aren't stretched out and they haven't shown that they can go deep into games and throw lots of pitches. Just becomes a little bit concerning to me. Um, but, though, I mean, those are all the guys I'd be looking to on this slate tonight from a first look aspect. We've pretty much just touched on all of them. And then once you get down past them, not looking too hot uh, once we get down in this range. So this is just not exactly uh, ideal. I'm sure there's going to be some other guys maybe that as we go throughout the day, I'll, I'll narrow in on and then better matchups and that kind of thing but uh, I mean I've been targeting the Angels a lot the problem is that the Rangers are expected to roll out um, a opener and then a long reliever so Abreu is expected to kind of open things up here I believe and then they're going to turn it over or Matt Bush and then they're going to turn it over to uh, Colby Allard so um, if we get confirmation on that I mean maybe Colby Allard's a, a sneaky long reliever option if you go ahead and uncheck the the uh, probables on FanDuel, he's been on salary over here on FanDuel, taking on that Angel squad. And then on uh, DraftKings, they've got a price that 4 8. So, I mean, I've just really enjoyed targeting this Angel squad early. I've been talking about it every video. There's just a lot of strikeouts in their bats, but there's also some a lot of strikeouts in other guys' bats that we've uh, discussed so far. So, for me, 
Um, I mean, it's a, it's a tournament play, but you also got to have a lot of upside out of your pitchers on a one on a one site a one pitcher site like FanDuel. Uh, but I just figured it was worth mentioning. And then switching over to bats, uh, as always, let's go to sort my sheet by Sierra skill on our active ERA. Worst to best, figure out the top guys that we can talk about the bats. And the guy on the slate that has the worst Sierra is going to be Kyle Wright, taking on the San Diego Padres over the last two years. He has a 5.57 Sierra, 38.5% hard contact rate with a 383 slugging up to righties and a 541 slugging up to lefties. Uh, pretty Actually pretty effective against righties, but against lefties, he's dreadful. He doesn't strike anyone out. A 541 slugging, 39.4% hard contact rate. So the San Diego Padres lefties are certainly going to be looking uh, like they are in a fantastic spot tonight. Looking at their implied run total here. They have a 4.1 implied run total. It's in San Diego, which is less than ideal. Not the best uh, hitting environment. But if you want to go to the lefties in, in Grisham, Cronenworth, Hosmer, I don't hate it. Uh, full stack it's looking a little bit rough. Only a 4.1 implied total. And like I said, he is very good against righties. So even though Sierra is really bad, San Diego doesn't really stack up the greatest against him. Dalton Jeffries taking on Toronto. We mentioned that huge uh, total for Toronto. He does have a pretty good hard contact rate, and he's very similar. Very good against righties, very bad against lefties. Uh, over a 12 innings pitch sample size, though, to those righties, and a 10 innings pitch sample size to lefties. So, um, very small sample size. And obviously, his opponent tonight is uh, a tough one taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. They have a really deep lineup. Um, Teoscar Hernandez was placed on the 10 day IL. So, obviously, that's going to. Kind of make their lineup not quite as friendly to be targeting, but still, if anything, maybe it makes the stack a little bit cheaper. They still do have a 5.65 implied total. Springer, Bichette, Guerrero, Guriel, Tapia, Kirk, Matt Chapman, Espinal, Zach Collins. Still a very good lineup throughout. Like Zach Collins is a guy that it does have some pretty good raw talent. Uh, one of the top prospects for quite some time there uh, from the catcher spot. And hasn't exactly put it on full display, but... You put him against some uh, less than stellar pitching against the Oakland Athletics, and he could definitely pop off. So I, I don't mind the Toronto stack, obviously. Reed Detmers taking on the Texas Rangers. Really bad across the board. Bad ground ball, fly ball stuff. Doesn't strike anyone out. He gives up a 573 slug into righties, a 41 slug into lefties. Uh, his strikeout rate does tick up against those lefties, but we're talking about a six innings pitch sample size, so just keep that in mind. Uh, looking at the Texas Rangers, they do have a 4.88 implied total. He's a lefty, so we'd obviously prefer to target the righties that do match lefties. And the Rangers do have a couple of really good ones for sure. And Marcus Semien at the top of the lineup. Mitch Garver matches lefties as well. Adolis Garcia, Ibanez, Culverson, Jonah Heim. Uh, Nick Solak, definitely not bad against lefties. So their stack could be pretty appealing, not to mention they're in Texas. It's just a really, really good uh, hitting environment. So I don't mind going to that stack. Vladimir Gutierrez taking on the LA Dodgers. Obviously, the LA Dodgers lineup is filthy up and down. Gutierrez uh, had it had it some bright moments last year. Also had some down moments. He gives up a 438 slugging to righties, a 507 slugging to lefties. Does a much better job of keeping the ball on the ground against those right-handed hitters. But I mean, he has to take on the LA Dodgers, which is just not a fun matchup. And uh, they're just they're automatically going to be a stack every night. You could be looking to Betts, Freeman, Turner, Muncy, Turner, Will Smith, Cody Bellinger, Chris Taylor, Gavin Lux. Having Gavin Lux in your ninth spot, I'm telling you, he would not be the nine hitter for a lot of other teams in the majors. So, uh, just the filthy lineup, always going to be a viable stack. And Gutierrez's underlying numbers really aren't that impressive, obviously, as you can see here. Brad Keller taking on Detroit's a guy that has a bad Sierra, but he does do a good job of keeping the ball on the ground. For so for me, I, I just really don't like stacking against him. Even if he gives up, you know, five runs, chances are it's singles, maybe some doubles in the gap. Um, not a lot of home runs. So for me, I, I just really don't want to stack these Tigers. And then we mentioned the 10 mile an hour winds blowing in, uh, in Kansas city from left field. So for me, not going to really want to target him too much. Marco Gonzalez taking on Houston is certainly a guy we can target. It gives up a ton of fly balls, a ton of hard contact, specifically against right-handed pitching or um, hitting. I mean, a 44.3% fly ball rate, 437 slugging to those righties. So the, uh, the Houston Astros righties that can slug left-handed pitching, certainly going to be looking good tonight. The only problem is it's in Seattle. Um, not quite as friendly of hitting environment down that left field line as it is in Houston. Does play friendlier down the left field line than the right field line, though. So you, they got that going for him in uh, T-Mobile Park. So that's the one positive. But uh, we'll say that uh, Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, Yuleska Gariel, Jeremy Pena, Chaz McCormick, Martin Maldonado, all those righties. And then obviously putting in the lefties is going to be a way to make your stack and train if they can get Gonzalez out of the game early, get in that Seattle bullpen. Uh, would not hurt our feelings to get some of the worst arms there. Michael Brantley, Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker. 
certainly, certainly going to be viable. Jordan Lyles, second on the New York Yankees. They're going to be looking like one of the top stacks on the slate. Uh, really bad across the board, a 37.5% hard contact rate, a 19.9% K rate. 468 slugging given up to righties, a 506 slugging given up to lefties. Uh, gets up a lot of home runs, just not good. It's in Camden Yards, which is a fantastic hitting environment. Uh, the only thing is in Baltimore, they did push the left field wall back. So I've been talking about this. Um, that left field short porch is no longer as short. They pushed it back about like 23 to 26 feet, I believe. I was looking at the article, and they raised the wall as well uh, a few feet. So just keep that in mind. Look that up when you get a chance. Uh, I mean, I could probably bring that up on screen at some point here. But in general, it's just it's not going to be quite as easy to hit the ball out in left field as it has been in the past. Still a great hitting environment overall. Uh, and it has traditionally been very good for home runs. And the good thing about this is even though the wall is pushed back, it does look like there's 10-mile-an-hour winds blowing out to left field. And when you're targeting guys such as an Aaron Judge, a Giancarlo Stanton, and a Josh Donaldson that can hit the ball 400 feet, you don't really have to worry about the wall being pushed back. Obviously, they can still get you there. It would be more ideal if it was still the old Camden Yards, but um, it's not going to scare me off the stack. A 5.59 implied total. They're on the road. The Baltimore Orioles bullpen's terrible. Uh, they get the guaranteed top of the ninth inning at bats. So I think you could target the Yankees one through nine. Higashioka, Hicks, Torres, Gallo, DJ Lane at the bottom of the order, Stanton, Rizzo, Judge, Donaldson at the top of the order. And traditionally, the Yankees just perform very well once they go to Baltimore. Uh, Glaber Torres is a guy that always hits very well in Baltimore, typically. Had a bit of a down season last time out, but maybe returning to these confines uh, gets him that confidence going. And he has a big game, so he's a guy that typically just performs very well in Baltimore. Colby Aller taking on the LA Angels. I mentioned maybe pitching him against the Angels, but I mean, he's also really, really bad <laughs> uh, in the hard contact category. He gives up a 426 slug in the right. He's a 477 slug in the lefties. He is a left handed hurler himself, but clearly not that much better against those left handed bats. So if you want to stack up the Angels, they do have a 5.12 implied total. Otani, Trout, Walsh, Rendon, Marsh, Sassy, Rojas, Wade, Velasquez. Uh, Wade and Velasquez in the 89 spot have a ton of speed around the base path. So that's actually something. Kind of interesting. If you want to go to like the low owned guys in the bottom of the order, uh, they don't have the most power, but if they can get on base, uh, I mean, these guys can really, really run. Being traded over from the Yankees last year, both just really, really fast on the base path. So I do think that's kind of an interesting wraparound stack for um, for tournaments. Zach Plezak taking on the San Francisco Giants. He gives up a 445 slugging to righties. Uh, against lefties, he's much better. So targeting the right handed power. San Francisco. That's a lot of lefties, though, but he's pretty splits neutral. He's still pretty bad against both. San Francisco has a lot of power in their bats as well, and they do get a nice ballpark upgrade going to Cleveland rather than San Francisco. Looking at the Cleveland Guardians ballpark, um, let's see if we can go down here. With the, with the change of the team name, I think there's some things that have been messed up in some data systems. Uh, unfortunately for Cleveland, and that might be the case right now with this ballpark diagram because I can see, yeah, progressive field, it's no longer so, unfortunately. But we still do have the data here. It's a lot of green and yellow going on as far as progressive field. And it does play friendlier down the right field line, I could tell you, um, from memory. So we do like to target the uh, right left-handed power in Cleveland. And the San Francisco Giants certainly do have plenty of it. Yastrzemski, Brandon Belt, Jock Peterson, Brandon Crawford. Uh, and then you can round out your stacks with Wilmer Flores, Darren Ruff. I don't hate that. I don't hate the Giants stack. It's always nice when they get out of San Francisco. They have a lot of power. It's a big ballpark upgrade. And then we just have so many teams we can target, man, on the slate. I mean, let's just look at run totals alone. The Yankees have a 5.59. The Blue Jays have a 5.65. Uh, the, so the White Sox have a 4.55. The wind is blowing out in Chicago, it looks like, out the left field, 12 mile an hour. So that is nice. Taking on Drew Rasmussen. Uh, as far as his stuff overall across the board, though, he is really good at limiting hard contact. Pretty solid. And the Rays, I mean, the Rays bullpen is really good. So I'm just a little bit scared to be targeting the Rays bullpen. Typically, that's not something I like to do too, too much. And I think the last stack that we really need to talk about is the. The Milwaukee Brewers taking on the St. Louis Cardinals against Miles Mikolos. He's actually the next guy up on this list behind Plezak. He gives up a 39.5% hard contact rate. That is worst on the slate. A 451 slug in the righties, a 432 slug in the lefties. He's certainly a lot, lot better against those uh, right-handed bats than he is against the lefties overall. Just the ground ball fly ball stuff's a lot better. 
So we do prefer to target him with the left-handed power in Milwaukee. You get that nice short right field porch as well. I always talk about targeting that in Milwaukee. Pulling up the diagram here. Uh, we can see down the right field line, a lot of green. A lot of green out there in right. So that doesn't hurt our feelings, of course, targeting those left-handed batters. And the Brewers have a couple good ones. Rowdy Tellas, Christian Yelich, Colton Wong, Omar Navarez. All those guys have a lot of power. So targeting them... Not a bad idea on this slate tonight. And then lastly, you can target cores if you want. Like I said, Stroman and Marquez going tonight. For me, I think it's kind of an easy fade, especially if he's going to get a lot of ownership. I mean, those are the two top guys in the rotation. They both do a good job. Um, I just I don't really want to target them when we have also some other really good spots that we've discussed on this slate today so far. So that is all for me in this one, guys. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. Of course, i got to give you my home run call before I let you guys go. Go. Uh, if you are getting very serious about MLB DFS, check out the premium content packages, KJK, patreon.com slash KJK underscore DFS. That's the link below in the description. Also, just dropped some new merch. I uh, just got actually mine in the mail, so if you want to check that out, uh, check that out. But uh, without further ado, got to give you my home run call of the day. Let's get into it. And my home run call of the day today is going to be Joey Gallo taking on Jordan Lyles. We mentioned his hard contact issues, especially against lefties with a 506 slugging, giving up a 37.8% hard contact rate, 43.1% fly ball rate, and only a 17.5% K rate. Obviously, with Joey Gallo, we know he has massive power. The only thing we're really worried about is the strikeouts. And in this matchup, we don't have to worry about it. Then when you're breaking down Jordan Lyles' repertoire, really reliant on the fastball-curveball changeup combination against left-handed hitting. Fastball, you're looking at about a 92 to 93 mile an hour fastball, and Joey Gallo crushes that pitch. A 395 ISO with a 434 Woba. Then when he breaks out the curveball, Gallo mashes as well. Off right-handed pitching a 244 ISO with a 314 Woba. And lastly, the changeup. No worries, because Gallo mashes as well. A 237 ISO with a 328 Woba. Great hitting environment on that right field porch in Baltimore as well. Get him in your lineups because he is my home run call of the day. So there we go, guys. Joey Gallo, get him in your lineups. And that is all for me in this one. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. Check out all the KJK DFS links down below in the description. And sign up for Prize Picks today if you haven't. Sponsor the program. Use that promo code KJK DFS to receive an instant match deposit up to $100 today. Wishing you guys all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.